all the glory. We give you all honor. We give you all the glory. We give you all honor. Praise God, hallelujah, and praise you, Lord, amen. Praise God, hallelujah, praise God, amen. Father, we thank you and we bless your name. We thank you for preserving our life to you now. We thank you for watching over us and blessing us on every psalm. We thank you for always answering our prayers. We thank you for giving us direction in life. We give you praise. Father, we give you praise. Take all the glory in our life. Take all the honor. As we look into your word in this Bible study at the Grateful Church Manchester, please bless us. Please teach us. The same do for all other churches meeting at the same time now. Visit each and every one of us in all your churches. Let your name alone be glorified. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God bless you. I hope your day has been a good one. Mine has been a good one. The Lord bless you all in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Today, if you uh, are with us, uh, I believe the Lord of God wants us to share about his word in a title, a topic in which he has given me called Undeveloped Gift. Undeveloped Gift. Media, you can help me make a small banner so that uh, people can see the title of my, uh, my talk, my sermon my homily, my exhortation, undeveloped gift, undeveloped gifts. So I will be asking you to open your Bible and join me as we read Ephesians chapter four. We'll be reading from verse seven and then we'll stop at verse 13. Ephesians chapter four, we'll be reading from verse seven and then we'll stop at verse four, at verse 13, come with me. Ephesians chapter 4. Oh, thank you. Media, you are very fast today. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. I just love you guys. <laughs> All right. In Ephesians chapter 4, reading from verse 7, it says, But unto one, every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. <laughs> Wherefore he said, when he let, ascended up on high, he led captive, captive and gave gifts unto men. And that he ascended, what is it? But that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth. He that ascended is the same also that descended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. Very powerful. Verse 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints. Notice that the essence of the gift for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry. Notice that the essence of the gift for the edifying of the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. I love that reading, do you, do you? Very important. Again, we are looking at undeveloped gift. <laughs> undeveloped gift. Do you get that? Very important. So the, the scripture we read tells us that God, Jesus, <laughs> when he descended, he ascended back up. And the Bible says he gave gift unto who? Unto man. He gave gift unto men. Take note, take note unto men. In the course of the teaching, I trust that the Holy Spirit will teach you something tonight. In the course of the teaching, I trust that understanding will be delivered to you. Hallelujah. Now we want to read again First Timothy chapter 4. 
Come with me to First Timothy chapter 4. First Timothy chapter 4. Come with me. First Timothy and chapter 4. I'll be reading from verse 14, and I'll stop the reading at verse 16. First Timothy chapter 4, reading from verse 14, and then I'll stop the reading at verse 16. Hallelujah. Come with me. In First Timothy chapter 4, reading from verse 14, it goes thus. Neglect, I'd like you to read with me. There's, there's um, what I call rhema. I call it revelation knowledge coming unto you, even as we speak. In First Timothy chapter 4, verse 14, it says, Neglect not the gift that is in thee. It means that there is a gift in you, sir. There's a gift in you, man. There is. There is. Which was given thee by prophecy with the laying on of hands of the presbytery. <laughs> verse 15. It says, Meditate upon these things. Keep thyself holy to them, that thy prophecy may appear to all. And verse 16. Take heed unto thyself. And unto the doctrine, continue in them. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. This is very powerful. Hallelujah. Very important. Did you read with me? Very important what we're talking about tonight. Very important what we are looking into tonight. Undeveloped gifts. And at the end of the sermon, of the exhortation, I'd like you to understand that there's a gift in you and it needs to be developed. Very important. There's a gift in you, just like as there's a gift in me. I know that. And I want to tell you tonight, God has sent me to tell you tonight, there's a gift in you too. Many Christians do not pay attention to the gift God has placed inside them. A lot of Christians. We don't pay attention to the gift God has placed inside us. Because he has. And because of this, a lot of Christians struggle. We toil endlessly. And the people around us also struggle. <clears throat> Why? Because we have failed to identify with the gift that has been given to us. <clears throat> Very important. We fail to develop it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I appreciate that. The gift is undeveloped. And many Christians are in this state with undeveloped gifts. Thank you. Very important. Your gift is a supernatural enabling. Did you hear that? Your gift is a supernatural enabling in your life. It's a supernatural enablement that God deposited in your life. <laughs> I tell you, make no mistake. Every Christian has it. I'll say that again. <laughs> every Christian, every child of God has a gift inside him or her given by God. It is a spiritual enablement, a, a spiritual enabling of the believer. Very important. Why do we have to look into this critically? Why do we have to have a clear understanding of this? The reason is because your gift gives purpose to your life. I'll say that again for somebody's benefit. Your gift give purpose to your life. Every Christian need to hear this. If you want to bless them, just share it. If you're, if you're <coughs> or watching on Facebook or YouTube, all you just need to do is to share it. This is to bless every believer. Many know. Equally, many do not know. Your gifts give purpose to your life. Very important. Every child of God has a spiritual gift. I'll tell you the truth. Every. There's a spiritual gift inside every child of God. And I'd like to tell you this in addition. It is your responsibility. One, to discover your spiritual gifts. Ask God to show you. <clears throat> I'll say that again. It is your responsibility to discover your spiritual gift because every believer has it. Every child of God has it. And if you're watching me right now, you're not a child of God. <clears throat> you're not a Christian. You're not a believer. And you'd like to give your life to Christ. I'm going to give you an opportunity to do that after this teaching. 
And after you've done that, you'll be also be able to have the Holy Spirit of God upon your life, and then you'll be able to have the gift of God, you know, in your life. Amen. Let's continue. It is the responsibility of every believer to discover his or her spiritual gifts. Simply ask God, and the Father will make it known to you. Very important. Number two, it is the responsibility of every believer to use your spiritual gift to benefit others. Our spiritual gift is to be used. I'll say that again. Our spiritual gift is to be used and is to be used to benefit others. So when you don't know your spiritual gift, you are doing a disservice to mankind. When you don't develop your spiritual gift, for those who know it, you are all equally doing a disservice to mankind. Very important. Come with me to First Peter chapter four. First Peter chapter four, and we do a reading at verse ten only. First Peter chapter four. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you for the privilege to teach this to your church. In First Peter chapter four and verse ten, it says. As every man hath received the gift. Are you with me? Are we together? Look at this now. As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. As every man hath received the gift, hath received the gift. He said, minister the same to one another. Thank you. Thank you. So the picture is clear, isn't it? The understanding is clear. Number one, there's a gift inside you, and it is for ministration to mankind, to others. The Bible says the manifold, as you have received, the manifold grace of God, you are to administer it to others. Make no mistake. I said it, it is your responsibility, number one, to discover your spiritual gifts. Number two, it is your responsibility to use your spiritual gift to benefit others. There are countless lives. There are people in bondage that it is your gift that will liberate them. There are people in challenges that it is your gift that will set them out and set them free. There are people needing direction and it is your gift that will give them and chatter to them a direction for life. Very, very important. Very important what we're talking about this evening. <clears throat> and I'd like you to capture everything God has to say to you tonight. <clears throat> Amen. Also, number three, it is your responsibility to develop your gift. Take this responsibility. It is yours <clears throat> to take. Every child of God, <clears throat> every child of God, once you are born again, it is your responsibility to develop the gift in you. I read it to you in First Peter, isn't it? He said, neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given to thee by prophecy, by the laying of hands of the persecutory. Very important. In another place, he said, give thyself only to them. That's thy profiting. I'll get there. There's a profiting for you from your gift. He said that thy profiting may appear to all. In another place, in the same Timothy, he says, if, um, and you continue in them, and by so doing, thou shalt save thyself and them that hear you. These are the things that make for life, so that a Christian doesn't need to be running elter and skelter, left and right. No. The things that make for our life has been delivered. The Bible says, according as his divine power, as he giving unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, first Peter. He has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has caught us to glory and virtue. And to glory and knowledge, I mean to say, very important. These things capture them. Number four. It is your responsibility, number four, it's your responsibility to learn from mature people 
who have the same gift that you have. Are you with me? It is your responsibility after developing your gift to learn from mature people who have the same line of gifts that you have. Some are apostles, some are prophets, some are evangelists, some are teachers, some are pastors, some are helpers, some are administrators, some are givers, some are contributors. Very important. Some are workers of miracles. Some have the gift of faith. Some have the gift of the word of knowledge. Some have the gift of working of miracles. Some have the gift of faith. Some have the gift of the word of knowledge. Some have the gift of the word of wisdom. Some have the gift of discernment of spirits. Very important. Some believers do some things in church and I and I just watch them <laughs> and I say some things and they wonder why I said it. it's because the eyes was open to see your spiritual states. That's why I'm careful of anyone you know that comes to the altar. It, we, we have to see spiritual. The who is coming to the altar to minister to the people of God. It is important. That's why he gave us the gift of discernment of spirits. In some places, people with unclean spirit have mounted the altar and they have ministered to the people of God, passing across unclean spirits. This is the reason he gave us this gift. What did he say? For the edification of the church, for the protection of the church, for the liberation of the church. You have a gift, sir. You have a gift, man. Very important. Let's go further. Let's go forward. Your gifts is ordained to impart lives. The essence of your gifting, the essence of your giftedness, the essence of my giftedness is to impart lives. That's what the Bible says, for the edification of the body of Christ. So the essence of the gift given to you and given to me is to impart lives. When you function in your giftedness, you impart lives. When you don't function in your giftedness, you, you, you are a disservice to lives. You become a disservice to life. And it's not so because there are particular numerous number of lives that you are ordained to impart, that you are ordained to bless, that you are ordained to prosper them. So when you fail to function in your giftedness, when you fail to develop your gift, you are, as it were, hindering many people. You are not allowed people, allowing people to come to the front of the blessedness that God has given them. And because the blessedness has been ordained to pass through you for, because of your gifting, and because you are lacking, you are you are sleeping, you have not developed your gifts, you are like a desical about it. People are suffering. Why? Because of you. Let us change. Let us change. Let us develop our gifts. Let's go back a little bit. Let us discover our gifts. And after discovery, let us make it a duty and a responsibility to develop our gifts. Why? The Bible tells us that the profiting of it may appear to all. That we may save ourselves and them that hear us. Amen. <clears throat> Let's go further. Hear this. Your gift will make your life better. I say this is, this is the beauty of it that many people don't know. This is the beauty. Of, I mean, I'm, I'm excited to tell you this. This is the beauty of it that many of us do not know. Your gift is ordained to make your life better. So in, in, in reality, in fullness of truth, it is to your advantage that you develop your gifts. It is to your advantage that you allow mankind to benefit from your gift because your gift is ordained to make your life better. 
So in the world, in this world, there are many people struggling. There are many people begging around. There are many people, you know, going through one challenge or the other. There is the solution to all this is in their gift. Once they begin, they begin to put their gift to use. All these challenges of life dissolve, but they refuse to face the challenges. The struggle remains because your gifting is ordained to make your life better. Your gifting is ordained to set you free in many areas of life where challenges occur. Are you still with me? <clears throat> Very important. You will you see when you walk in your gift, you will not need to pray for some certain things. When, when you operate in your gift, when you live in your gifting, when you develop your giftedness, you develop your gift and you operate in it, there are some prayers you will not need to pray. Because prayer for daily needs, prayer for some things, prayer for accommodation, prayer for a uh, house, and some other things, they will be delivered. You, you will need no prayer because your gifting will take care of them. Because it will deliver to you what we call the resultant effect, the resultant benefits of your gifting. This is the way God set things. Why don't you step into it? <laughs> Very important. It's important. It is given to you and others. Your gifting is given to you and others. The benefactors of your gift is you, yourself, and those that will hear you. Very important. Very important. Because when you begin to use your gift, align unto you, take this from me, because it is based on the word of God. You can take my word for this. It is based on the word of God. When you begin to use your gift, it will sustain you. It will provide for you. It will provide for your life. Everything your life needs is embedded, included in your gifting. The moment you activate the use of your gift for the benefit of mankind, you will see that the provisions of life are delivered to you. That's how it works. That's how it functions, friends. I've come to deliver to you the truths of life. Right from the throne of grace. These are the things that makes our life complete. And I don't want us to be far away from it at all. Let me give you a scriptural reading that might buttress what I've been saying to you. That you may hear the word of God and not the word of man. First Timothy chapter 4. <clears throat> Let's go back to reading First Timothy chapter 4. And then we play too on uh, a very important uh, verse there. So let's quickly go back to First Timothy and do a reading there. First Timothy chapter 4. And this time around, we start reading from verse 15. First Timothy chapter 4. Come with me, for I perceive that um, this will deliver to you a very good understanding. In First Timothy chapter 4, reading from verse 14, hear this. I'm going to be breaking it down for your advantage you know, and for clarity. It says, meditate on, upon these things. It's talking about your gifts. If you go to verse 14, media, help me go to verse 14. <clears throat> Can you see now? This is the exhortation. This is the advice. It says, neglect not the gift that is in thee. Develop it. That's what it means. Develop it. Which was given thee by prophecy with the laying on of hands on the best Now, verse 15. It says, meditate upon these things. Give time to it. Give thyself wholly to them. Concentrate your life on it. He said that thy property may appear to all. Oh, it will appear to all. Now, 16. This is what I'm going to play too. It says, take it unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself. And them that what? Hear you. Thank you. Did you read that with me? Absolutely clear. Did you read with me? So he was telling us there that the gifting in you, it will first of all save you. You see, what the word save there means that it will cater for you. I have no time to break it down for you from the original translation of the Greek. It means that it was the word save you there means it will cater for you. It will take care of you. And that's true. It is ordained to function that way. And then not only you, if you read it, it said, and them that hear you. Because those that 
benefit from your gifting, you will be delivered from any challenges of life because your being is ordained to function like that, to deliver them. Are you with me? I'm passionate about teaching you this, that you may go out there and, and, and bless life and set the country free and deliver the oppressed. That's why I push you all into outreach, into evangelism. So that when we're evangelizing, the good inside some of us, we come out, we heal the sick, we set the captive free, but we sit down there in like a desiccal attitude. It's not good. There are people dying there, and God has empowered us, enabled us, He has imparted us to go and bless mankind. And I'm assuring you, I'm assuring you that every other thing that you need in life will be taken care of. It's embedded in the gifting. All you need to do is develop this gift, put it to use, and you see everything promised at work. <clears throat> Hallelujah. <clears throat> Very important. I'd like you to know that <clears throat> spiritual gifts are given to us for church groups. <clears throat> church group. Whenever you see a church not growing as it ought to, it means that there are many people in that church sleeping upon their gift. Their gift is dormant, yet it is inside them. This is a clarion call for us to wake up and develop our gift. That undeveloped gift, let us bring it out. Let us discover it. Let us develop it. And you begin to see exponential growth in the church. You are either a blessing to the church you go or not. <laughs> but the reality is that there's a gift inside everybody. It is given. It is already given. It is not that you are bound to ask for it. No, sir. No, ma'am. As long as you are a child of God, you have a spiritual gift imparted to you. Very important. It is given to you and I to make ordinary people accomplish supernatural things. The gift is given to you and I in order that the people of God, ordinary people, will accomplish spiritual things for the church and for the kingdom of God. Yes, but the irony of things, which must change tonight, is that many of us, we are sleeping on this gift. Many, many know their gift and they are doing nothing about it. Many do not even know. So there are two assignments to do today. The first is to go and discover your gifts if you don't know. <laughs> go with this mindset that God has given you a gift and you want to discover it. If you have discovered it, go with this mindset tonight that I need to develop my gift. That's what the scripture tells you. It's a neglect it not. Very important. Very important. Amen. <clears throat> Let's move forward. I'd like to let you know that your gift, it will bring joy of God to people. <laughs> when you begin to use your gift, it will bring joy to the people. It will bring joy to the church and the community where the church is. <clears throat> Very important. And then from community, the nation, from nation to the world, I've seen people who are working and living with their gifts that God has blessed them with and is taking them to nations of the world. Very important. Very important. God himself will open doors for you. The moment he sees that you have developed your gifts and you are working on your gifts, God himself will open doors for you. He will take you to the people that needs to benefit from your gift. He will take you there. He will deliberately, intentionally orchestrate the, an open door for you such that you will be called. You know, people will call you, call you, call you. That's the essence of the gift. Very important. You, you, you need to do these things. Somebody might be saying, Pastor, how do I discover my gifts? Very simple. <laughs> Very simple. You discover your gifts. 
by serving forces. That's what many people, that's what many people do not want to do. That's what many people are not doing. If you are failing in the place of service, you will not quickly discover your gifts. The discovery of your gifts is in the place of service. It starts by serving first. Then God will lead you and show you your gifts. I want to encourage you and to really encourage you. Start by serving first. And I assure you, God will show you your gifts and he will reveal it to you. He will lead you. Yeah, but you need to start by serving. If you don't start by serving, you will not be able to discover your gifts. <clears throat> Another way to discover it, ask God. <clears throat> ask God. And I am very, almost 90% sure, God would first of all tell you to go and serve. He will tell you to go and serve somewhere, most likely your church or your community. And then he will begin to reveal your gifts to you. Are you with me? Very important, the things that we're talking about. Very important. We are ordained to serve. That's what we are ordained to do. We are commissioned to serve. So every believer, that is not serving. The believer is function beneath what he or she is commissioned to do. And that's why I use the word ordain. Ordain means you are programmed to do this. So when you fail to do that, unknowingly, many believers don't know this, you are doing a disservice to yourself, to your life. And unfortunately, a disservice to the life of many people. Very important. The prayer request of some people, what they are praying for, trusting God for, for many years, it is only activated or can only be activated immediately they start serving. And it is a burst out to their gifts. Very important. Very important. There are testimony of so many wonderful testimonies opening up to people, immediately they began functioning in their gifting. What is most important is that you, a believer, you sit down as you equally pay attention to your education, as you equally pay attention to your career, your ambition, your family. Take time to pay attention to the giftedness deposited in your life. Because that's that's you see you see you see I, I, I'm short of English word to express the spiritual reality of what I'm talking about. That's where the strongest pillar of your life lies in. Because immediately you discover that gift and begin to use it, you will see possibilities open up to you. You will see doors open up to you. Things you, you know in your knowing that your career cannot deliver to you, will be delivered to you. You, you in as well, the Holy Spirit has given me the word. Now, the Holy Spirit tells me to tell you this. As it were, when you begin to walk in your gifting, it will bring you before great men. It will bring you before great men. That's what the Bible says. A man's gift, what does it say? Makes room for him. And then it says, and bring him or her before great men. Isn't that beautiful? But many people settle for the less, the less, the less. Let's move forward, my, my time is well spent. <laughs> what happens? Failure to deliver and use your gifts. <laughs> what happens when you and I, when we fail to, to develop and to use our gifts? Because there are many believers failing to develop their gifts. There are many believers failing to use their gifts. Remember I told you at the beginning, make no mistake, every believer has a gift. I showed you. He said he, 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 he descended 
and ascended, and what did the Bible say? And gave gift unto men. So it is a given. It has already been given. So what many believers are failing to do, which I choose not to fail to do, what many believers are failing to do is to develop the gifts and to use it. So what happens when we fail to develop and use our gifts? Number one, number one, if a believer fails to develop and use his or her gift, number one, that believer hinders people from being blessed. It's as true as that. That believer, such a person, even though he's a child of God, is hindering many people. It's hindering many nations. It's hindering many generations from being blessed. Because the truth of the matter is, God is a spirit and he uses men. God uses men who are in their body, as you see me in my body. The dead, God can use them. Their spirit has gone back to God. Only the living, God can give. That's why a dead man who died with gifts is of no value. It's of no value at all. That's why when the bones of the prophet Ezekiel, the bones were buried, and then it, uh, some people fell down on the bones, they gifted him. The unction in the prophets, you know, healed them. So it means that the prophet went to the grave, you know, with the gifts because the body is gone. So that there's nothing, the, the body couldn't carry the gifts to benefit others. Anytime you fail to discover, develop, and use your gift, you are, as it were, hindering many lives, thousands, millions of lives from being blessed. And that's a great disservice to the kingdom of God. And I want you and I to change. <laughs> what happens again? Failure to develop and use your gifts such a believer will hinder the growth of the church. It's as simple as that. In fact, I think I should open the scripture to tell you so that you don't say that, you won't say that I'm saying that because I'm a pastor. No, it's the reality of life. Before I was born, before you were born. If you fail to discover, to develop, to use your gift, you are hindering church growth. You are hindering the kingdom of God from being populated. You are hindering the kingdom of God from being pronounced. You are hindering the church and the kingdom of God from being known. That's the truth. And it's captured in Ephesians chapter 4. So let's open to it. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 12. The book of Ephesians chapter 4. And we'll be reading verse 12. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 12. In Ephesians chapter 4 verse 12, here goes the reading. What is the gift for? I keep, I, I keep telling you, this is it. So when you and I fail to discover, develop, and use our gifts, it is supposed to be for the perfecting of the saints. It means that the saints are not being perfected. Because of you, the saints are not being perfected. For the work of the ministry, can you see? For the work of the ministry, it means that the work of the ministry is not being done. It's not being done. Very important. That's why I tell my ministers. I said, if we if we don't do these things, we are hindering God from performing wonders in His church. We are hindering church growth, and that's why we edify ourselves that we have to, you know, sacrifice, do some, give some sacrifice sometimes, so that the perfection of the saints can be done, so that the work of the ministry can go on. Look at the other one for the edifying of the body of Christ. So anytime you fail to develop and use your gift, you are hindering the body of Christ from being edified. And it's not a good thing. Thank you. It's not a good thing. <clears throat> it's not a good thing. I want to encourage you tonight with all of my spiritual soul and body. Make it a duty desire or pose in your heart. If you don't know your gift, to discover it. Ask God. That's what you need to do. Start serving. That's the second thing you need to do. If you know your gifts, make it a duty to develop it. Make it a duty 
to put it to use. Now let's go for that. Somebody was saying, Pastor, how do I develop my gifts? Sure. The Holy Ghost knows you will ask that question. And here is the answer of the Spirit of God to you. <laughs> how to develop your gifts? How to develop your gifts? Number one, study. This is very essential. The Holy Ghost gave me this to give you. <laughs> study about all the gifts God mentioned in his word. <laughs> study about all the gifts mentioned in the Bible and how it operates. <laughs> Take a deliberate study. This is how to develop your gifts. Take a deliberate study of all the gifts mentioned in the Bible and how it operates. It's very important. <laughs> Take a deliberate personal study of all the gifts mentioned in the Bible by Jesus, by the apostles, and how the gift operates, study it. <laughs> Give yourself to meditation on it. That is how to develop your gift, number one. <laughs> number two, how to develop your gift, number two. Practice the gift put to use, the gift you recognize in your life, <laughs> the gift that you recognize that God has given you, put it to use. There are some gifts in my life that I know God has given me and I put it to use. I give attention to it. As people give attention to their career, to their career as I give attention to my other careers, my, my career, I give attention to it too. I give it quality attention. So when you recognize that, I think this, God has given me this gift. Practice the gifts. If you think God has given you the gift of healing, pray. When we say let's pray for those who are sick, rise up and pray. Stretch forth your hand with them. Join us in church to do so. When somebody is sick, say, do you mind if I pray for you? Do so. Do so. You begin to see that if you have that gift, when you pray, the person, people get healed because God will want to confirm to you that yes, that's your gifts. Very important. If you have the gift of the word of knowledge, you will just see that you know things about believer. No, you know things about a happiness. Sometimes I just know things in, in church. Yes. Sometimes I see somebody, somebody doing something in church, and I see that the person is just didn't prepare. It's by the word of knowledge. We were in church one day. You were having Bible study in the former place that we used for Bible study. My son was very young then. So he was crawling on the table. And I received a word of knowledge that he would fall down. So I quickly told, you know, one of our ministers here playing with him. I said, let's, let's take him off the table. Because the word of knowledge came that he will fall down. So when you see that, you know, and then sometimes you, you go for that and put it to use. God will do something to confirm to you that you have that gift. Very important. These are the way in which we do these things. If you notice that you desire to evangelize, it might be that the gift of the evangelist, the office of the evangelist is being given to you. Very important. Very important. And how do you also know these things? They come to you at ease. What some people need to pray hours and hours before they operate in it, you just operate in it without praying. That's the simplest explanation of recognition of a gift. <laughs> some people within hours, for example, somebody who has the gift of faith. Some of us have to study the Bible to grow our faith. But this person has the gift of faith. It might not even be a, somebody that studied the Bible very well, but has been given the gift of faith. And then he just pray or declare it in, and it will be so. And that's why sometimes when the gift of, of faith comes upon me, I just rise up and I make declarations. I make declarations and it happens. When people come to me and say, Pastor, uh, I need prayer for this. 
and I sense the gift of faith come upon me, and I'll tell them, it is done. <clears throat> you will hear good news. <clears throat> and then they go. They don't hear good news. I said, go back again. And they go back again, <clears throat> and they, 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 good news happen. You see, it's because I sense the gift of faith at work, and it was put to use. Because if you don't put it to use, there won't, there won't be a manifestation. <clears throat> but when you put it to use, you see a manifestation. God confirms to you that you have that gift and you begin to use it, to use it. And by reason of use, you familiarize yourself with it. Very important. Let's go further. How to develop your gifts. How to develop your gifts. Number three, learn from mature people, mature believers, or rather fathers of faith, pastors. Learn from mature people who has the same gifts as yours. Very important. Very important. I know the gift God has given me. And I know some fathers of faith that have the same gifts. So what I do is I follow them. I listen to them. I check on them. I regularly listen to their sermon and see how they manifest the use of that gift. So I learn, I learn. It's a way to develop the gifts. It's a way, you know, it's like they are mentoring you. It's a way to develop the gift. So if you sense that you have the gift of healing, then the people you need to be listening to a lot, the meetings you need to be going to a lot are healing meetings. And the people you, summons you need to be listening to a lot are summons about healing. Very soon in this uh, commission, in this uh, in, in the Great Future, we will be having healing sons. So there is a coming of the impartation of the anointing of healing. It's already coming. In fact, it has landed in the house. We just I just need capable support. Capable and who will enter into that, that ministry. Ministerial support on the left, on the right, and we will enter into the, 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 the healing school. We will enter to the ministry of administering healing to people. Very important. That's why we are discussing this, because this is the time, this is the hour. The Holy Ghost is ready, is waiting for you and I. Amen. Very important. Make no mistake, I tell you this things. When you operate in the gift, your church that you attend will benefit because it's for the edification of the body of Christ. There will be church growth. There will be impartation to life. You will be used to deliver men and women from bondage. You will be used to chart the course of people's life. People will have direction. They will have purpose. They will see well. They will prosper well. And I line up to you. You will also excel marvelously <laughs> marvelously you will triumph gloriously because the gifts always benefits the career i, I said that again as a random <laughs> the gifts always benefits the career you cannot be the carrier of the gifts and be left out no no the gifts always a vessel <laughs> Use as a channel, never lack what is passing across. Very important. As I close with this, Romans chapter 12, Romans chapter 12, come with me. I want to believe you, you've been blessed. I, I strongly feel, perceive in my spirit that God has sent me this night to someone, to someone, to someone that will begin to manifest the blessedness of God, of God, his giftedness in our life and his church will benefit a lot. Hallelujah. In Romans chapter 12, we'll be reading from verse 4. Romans chapter 12, we'll be reading from verse 4. And because of time, I'm going to stop at verse 8. <laughs> Come with me. I, I want us to round up with this. It, 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 it's, it's essential. It, it's it's, it's mind-blowing. <laughs> very, very rich. Romans chapter 12, reading from verse 4. It says, for as the body, for us, we have many members in one body. Let's carefully read this. Is loaded, and all members have not the same office. 
Or you could say the same gift. Verse five. He said, so we be many as we are men in the grateful church. I want body in Christ. And every one member, every one member, one of what? Another. Verse six. He says, having them gifts. Can you see this? My God, my God, my God. Can you see this? Having them gifts, preferring according to the grace that is given to us. It is it to the pastor, to us, all of us. When the prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Verse 7. Or ministry, let us wait on our ministry. Or either teach it on teaching. Verse 8. Or either exhort it on exhortation. Or either give it, let him do it with simplicity. Either rule it with diligence. Either show it mercy with what? Cheerfulness. Do you see that? <laughs> Thank you. I'm stopping there. So it's, 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 it's to give us an understanding that every one of us has been given gifts and we need to minister this one to another. I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm telling you these things. And I pray, I pray that the Holy Ghost teach you more. My time is well spent and I have to stop now. I pray that the Holy Spirit, you know, give you this a more clear revelation. And we all, myself and yourself, will begin to walk in this newness of revelation, life. And then our life will have a serious meaning, an impactful meaning to other lives, to those whom God will bring to the grateful church. And not only that, the community in which we are, and not only that, the, the borough. And not only that, the city, I mean, the, the nation, and not only that, the world at large. God bless you as we join hands to do these things in Jesus' name. But eventually you are there. 